if the frequency of ac voltage is equal to the resonance frequency then the maximum amplitude is obtained and the frequency of oscillation is given by this formula f is equal to p by 2l root of y by rho so y is a young's modulus wherever you have stress coming into picture you will have this young's modulus coming so rho is the density of the material and p is a constant which varies from 1 to 3 so the crystal is suitably cut and polished to vibrate at a certain frequency between the two metal plates so you can see in the very first diagram in between two metal plates you have the crystal so this is the notation of a crystal oscillator even in reality also it is being fabricated in the same way only okay you will between the two metal plates you will have a crystal made up of quartz or rochelle salt or tourmaline so i have already discussed this in class why we go for quartz because quartz does not break so easily and it has a very good piezoelectric effect whereas tourmaline has a very good piezoelectric effect but it breaks and rochelle salt is very hard but the piezoelectric effect is very poor so quartz is one crystal where the piezoelectric effect is also moderate and it is also strength-wise, it is also very strong. So the equivalent circuit of crystal. So what is the, in order to uh, observe the properties of crystal, I want to see what all the components are present inside the crystal. Okay, what all components are there inside the crystal. So the crystal the crystal can be represented by uh, this equivalent circuit so you have an rlc in series and you have a capacitance in parallel see the crystal is between two metallic plates that will contribute to the capacitance cp and inside the crystal is vibrating it is oscillating so definitely you will have an rlc circuit inside so that is represented here so when the capacitance is in series with the inductor you call it as cs when the capacitance is in to your inductor, it is called a CP. To differentiate between the two capacitors, I am going to use CS and CP. So the ratio of CP to CS may be 100 times more. So which will indirectly say one point to you. There are two resonating frequencies for this crystal oscillator. One is called a series resonating frequency given by FS. Another one is called as parallel resonating frequency given by FP. Since I have two capacitance CS and CP, I will naturally have two resonating frequencies FS and FP. And the resonating frequency is inversely proportional to the thickness of the crystal. So the resonating frequency can vary from 0.5 megahertz, 30 megahertz, depending on the uh, properties of the crystal. And if you find the reactance of the crystal neglecting this R, so neglecting this R, if you find the total reactance, it will be given by this Jx equal to 1 by J omega Cp into omega square minus omega S square divided by omega square minus omega P square. So this is the reactance of the crystal which we find by uh, computing the impedance across the two ends of your crystal. From this equation, you find that if you put omega equal to omega S, reactance is zero. So at the series resonating frequency, the crystal is going to provide zero reactance. When omega equal to omega p, the reactance is infinity. So at parallel resonating frequency, the reactance is infinity. 